the easiest, the simplest way to create content in B2B, along with what I think most people now believe is the easiest way to get distribution for that content in B2B. And so that is podcast and LinkedIn. Hello, hello, my name is Tom Hunt. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be breaking down the four steps to become famous in any B2B niche. Now, this may also work in B2C, maybe not. I'm not sure because I have pretty much zero experience there, but we're going to be focusing in on the world of B2B. And I'm going to lift out four steps that we've been refining. Well, we've been refining one of them at Fame for like three years, but the other two we've been kind of dipping our toes into within Fame. But I've also been doing this kind of stuff for like 10 years. My background really is like selling things online. And so all of these things I've been kind of doing for the past 10 years, but really in the past three years, we've been doing a lot more. So I'll quickly give you the headlines. Step one is creating a podcast and it sounds simple, but there's a lot more to it. Step two is that we're then going to be linking to that pod from your LinkedIn profile of a new part below the headline that allows you to link to something. Then we're going to be posting zero-click content from your profile, and then we're going to be getting booked on other shows in the niche. Now, that's the headline. Obviously, I'm going to go into much more detail about how they tie together and, of course, how you actually implement these things. So what we're really doing here is we're combining what I believe to be, and I think a lot of people are now starting to believe this as well, the easiest, the simplest way to create content in B2B, along with what I think most people now believe is the easiest way to get distribution for that content in B2B. And so that is podcast and LinkedIn. And it's podcast in terms of your own, but also in terms of other people's podcasts that you can go on. And then when we say LinkedIn, it's posting content natively into the platform in order to get those super cheap impressions with your audience. But before that, before we jump into these four steps, I need to explain the fame formula, like our whole business was built around this concept. And really, there's only two things you need to do if you want to get famous in any niche. And if we take people that are actually famous, like in the B2C world, like Taylor Swift, they follow this whole formula as well. The formula is very simple. It's just A, create a lot of really good content over a long period of time, and then B, be seen around other famous people in the niche. So I love Taylor Swift as an example because she has been creating amazing content in the form of music for many, many years. She started off in country music, spent like 10 years getting really, really good at doing that. So consistently released really good content. And then she was seen with other famous people in the niche. So in the early days of her country music career, she would go on other people's other country stars' songs, and she would bring other country stars onto her songs. And then she shifted into pop music. She shifted into rap music, where she's got really good at creating that content and then been seen around other famous people in the niche. So the exact same thing applies to you and your B2B company. A, create a lot of really good content consistently around the niche over time. And then B, be seen around other famous people in that niche. So let's jump now into step one. It sounds simple, but there's obviously a lot more to it. But first, we need to start a podcast. And the reason we start a podcast is because it is the easiest way to create good content around your niche. If you've tried to write a like 3,000 word blog post you know, like versus having a 20 minute episode with a guest on, it's like similar amount of content you create. If you transcribe that 20 minute episode, you'll get close to that. But the amount of time it could take you like two people, like two days to write a blog post versus it's literally going to take you 20 minutes to record that. Obviously, you have to find the guest and prep the guest, etc. But it is just super, super efficient in terms of actually creating content. So that's the first reason. The second reason, if we go back to the fame formula, is that it's very easy to incorporate other people, other people that are famous, into the content if you are recording a podcast. Let's say you wanted to get someone else who's famous in the niche to write you a guest blog post. They're just not going to do that, right? Unless they're a writer and they love doing it, because it literally takes like a day. And so this is why we say podcast for step one. Now, a few specific points so you get this right. A very easy way to do this is simply take the niche that you're trying to get famous in, let's say sales compensation, and then we're going to create the sales compensation podcast. Like that is really as simple as it can be. You can get a little bit more like exciting around that, or you could get a little bit more clever. But really, we want to get the keyword in the name so it's super clear. And plus, so you collect any like inbound search for that term. So 
we're going to create this show. And then as we're creating the show, there's like three things that most B2B companies get wrong when they do this. So I'll quickly run through them. First is we want the niche to be uncomfortably narrow. So if we have software that helps people with sales compensation, we could obviously start a business show, we could start a sales show, we could start a sales compensation show. And to go even more niche than that, I'm not sure that, like how you would take that. And so we want to be uncomfortably narrow with the niche. So sales compensation in this example is about, right? It's always easy to start more narrow and then get less narrow over time versus the other way around. Next, we need to be strategic about guests. So there's typically three criteria we look at for guests. A, and this is the most important, can they add value to the audience? If people can't add value to the audience, then they can't come on. That's like a hard rule. But the other two are optional. B is, do they have an audience in the niche? E.g., are they famous? So some of that fame can rub onto us when they share their episode. And then B, could they be a potential customer or partner of our business? Because then it's just good to build the relationship with them anyway. And if we can monetize the content on the guest side, then we can improve the content on the listener side and the show is going to grow faster. So that's number two, being strategic about guests. And then three is just consistency. So choose a cadence where you slash your host, your production team is able to hit that consistently every time for six months. So whether that's weekly or biweekly, we don't typically advise monthly. So this is step one. Now, In this case, if we're trying to just get famous versus like build relationships, then I would urge that the first 12 guests are going to be people that are famous in the niche, the most famous people in the niche. So we're going to go and find the most famous people within the world of sales compensation. So that is step one. And as that happens, fame will start to build for the brand, but then there's going to be three more steps, which are going to make this even more impactful for the fame of your B2B brand. So step two is a very easy one. And this is simply for the hosts, if they haven't already, it's going to convert their LinkedIn profile into a creator profile. It's very easy. Just Google how to do it. And when you do that, you can click edit on the profile. You scroll down and there's an option to add a website. And so you can add the URL and we're going to link directly to the podcast, typically a podcast website, not to Apple or Spotify, because you don't want to alienate people that use different apps. And then we're going to say something along the lines of the number one sales compensation pod is quite condensed on, like, it's quite restrictive on the characters. So, but I think number one sales comp pod is going to fit in there. And so maybe we're being a little bit ambitious. We've only just launched a show. It, it might already be the number one sales compensation show, but we're going to lift that there because it's like obviously social proof. If people think it's the number one sales comp pod, anyone interested in sales compensation is going to click on that link. So we're going to add convert to creator, add that link. That's step two. It's a very easy one. Now, step three, we are going to start to get distribution for your ideas for the podcast. And so there's obviously a lot more into like LinkedIn organic posting strategy. And I'm going to link below in the show notes to an episode where I dig into this just on its own. So I've been doing this really for like six months and I've actually learned a bit more since that episode. So I'll update you on this as well. But the headlines are, we need to choose a niche. Now, fortunately, we've already done that. Sales compensation is a niche. The second point, so once we have the niche, we just need to start posting ideas. So anything you learn, as we go through the process of interviewing these famous people in the niche, we're going to share in a daily text slash image slash video post on LinkedIn. When I say daily, I think Monday to Friday is fine if we can handle that. Again, it's about being consistent. So if we can't do Monday to Friday, then we're going to reduce the cadence maybe three times a week, maybe two times a week. But we just want to be consistent again for the six months. And so we're going to be writing, literally just writing out ideas, concepts, controversial ideas, etc. that we're learning from these episodes, all that we know from our day-to-day work, all that you know because you're the expert. And when I say you, who I'm probably talking to here is going to be the host of the show. This is the person who we're going to link to from their LinkedIn profile, where we're going to link to the podcast. And this is the person who's going to be interviewing these people, so they're going to be getting the insights. So we literally just need to start posting because then we can start to look at the impressions and the likes and the comments and the shares metrics to understand what format of post is resonating and what topics are resonating. Now, while we're also doing this, we have to find those other 12 people and more, the other influencers in the niche, in this case, sales compensation. And we're going to be commenting like actual real comments, trying to do like two to three real comments a day. One, that's going to get more visitors back to your profile. But two, that's also going to start building relationships with those people, which is going to increase the likelihood that you might get on their podcast or they'll come on yours. And no one really knows this for sure, but the LinkedIn algorithm prioritizes people's posts if that person is also commenting on others. So your post will get more reach if you comment on other people's posts. Also, include relevant hashtags. Don't stuff, don't make it obvious, but it does add value. 
Now, all, like the way LinkedIn works is that the more people like and comment and share your stuff, obviously the more people will see it. So if you scroll through your newsfeed, you'll often see things like little headlines above items of the newsfeed that say someone you're connected to liked or commented on this post. Now, because I've been doing this for six months, my most impressioned post is 26,000 impressions. And that post was like stumbling along at one to 2,000 impressions, like a few hours after it was posted. And then LinkedIn ads, the profile, commented on this because I think I had the B2B hashtag in the post. And then that post literally shot up. It was getting like 500 to 1,000 impressions every half an hour. And it immediately, not immediately, but within 24 hours, it was my most impression post because I got the comment from that big profile. So if we have the hashtags and if we're building relationships with people that have big audiences, that increases the likelihood we're going to get a comment and that's going to massively increase the likelihood we're going to get those essentially free impressions. So LinkedIn ads basically gave me, if we're looking at like, I don't know, $50 per impression CPM, that one comment probably gave me 23,000 impressions times that by 50. I'm not sure if my math is right. No, it's, 20, so it's 23 times 50. They basically gave me $1,000 when they commented. It's pretty crazy. So that is important. Include hashtags and comment on other people's. Try to make things like for every episode we release on the podcast, we're also going to be writing a post and then we're going to be tagging the guests and we're going to try and make it a little bit edgy. I'll link in the comments to examples of how I've done this. So let's say we're releasing the show weekly. One of the weekly posts is going to be directly linking and promoting the podcast. So you can't promote, basically, to get impressions on LinkedIn, you can't really just tell people to go and look at your link. You have to add value in the post or like lead up to the post and then put the link in the comments. So one per week is going to be this. But we want to take the most interesting, edgy, controversial idea from the episode, write about it, and then tag the guest, tag the guest business, and then link in the comments. And I'll give you three examples of how I've done this. This is a great way to get more exposure because what we're going to do once we've posted that post is we DM or email the guest with a link to that post that almost guarantees we're going to get a like and comment because they're obviously going to read it if it's about them. Ideally, they'll then go away and post something themselves and link back to the episode as well. So that is step three, posting on LinkedIn. Now, step four. So let's quickly summarize. We've started the show. We're starting to build relationships with these famous people in the sales comp niche. We've added the show. We've added the podcast just below our job title on LinkedIn, and we started posting zero-click content Monday to Friday. Now we want to leverage all this work we're doing to go and share the ideas, the controversial, interesting, counterintuitive takes on the world of sales conversation in front of other people's audiences. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to find other shows in the sales comp space. Now, if there's not enough, like there might be, I don't know, five in the sales comp space, But if you go up one level to sales management, then there'll be more and you can go and pitch ideas for specific sales comp topics on the sales management podcast. Now, in terms of finding these, you can go to listennotes.com, search for sales compensation. That should find some shows. But also because you've been interacting with these people, you should know the famous players in the space. Some of them will probably have podcasts. You should have already either brought them onto your show or been commenting with them on LinkedIn. And so it's going to be very easy for you to send them a quick message to pitch them for you to be a guest on their show. Now, when we're pitching, you just need to add three things. First, you need to show them that you've actually listened. So call out something in an episode that you liked. Second, you need to propose a specific topic or topics. And third, you need to be clear about how you're going to promote their episode. What we like to do is say that we're going to spend X amount on Facebook or LinkedIn ads to promote their episode. Because podcast hosts really care about two things, getting great content for their audience and then growing their show. So if you can show them that you could give them great content and that you can grow their show by spending money to promote it, then you're going to be much more likely to actually get in and get them to accept you. So you're then going to go on these pods. Let's say you reach out to 10, you'll get one booked first, you'll have to chase the rest. You go on, you share, you know what idea they're resonating because you've been posting every day on LinkedIn. You share those hot takes. It's going to be a great episode. They're going to love you. You're going to build the relationship. If they haven't already, you can invite them onto your show. You can start commenting on each other's posts on LinkedIn. When the episode goes live, they're obviously going to share. They're going to tag you. That's going to get you more exposure it, to their audience. People will find you. They'll come to your profile. They'll then find your podcast, ideally subscribe. You can then also take that audio, post it on your podcast feed if you would like. And then you can also one of your posts Monday to Friday can be about that episode. You pull out the awesome parts and then you link to that episode on someone else's podcast. That makes them happy because you're sharing and promoting them. But you're also giving great 
more great content about sales comp to your audience. So let's summarize. We've taken a niche and then we've started creating a shed load of content about the niche through your own show. We've made it very easy for people on LinkedIn to find that show. Step two. Step three, we've then taken like these awesome ideas that we're getting from learning from these people in the niche and we're sharing them on the best place, the easiest place to get distribution in the B2B world right now, which is LinkedIn. And then we're leveraging those relationships and those ideas to get booked on other podcasts. And then that fuels the flywheel because it's giving you more ideas, it's giving you more content, it's giving you you more exposure. So if we take these four steps and we execute them over six months, what you'll realize that we're actually doing is executing on that same formula that I explained at the start, which is A, creating a lot of great content consistently over time, and then B, being seen with other famous people in the niche. And so we're refining the ideas, we're understanding what's like cutting edge, what's interesting, what's counterintuitive from all this content creation and interviewing that we're doing. And then through every step, pretty much, we're being seen around, we're commenting on, we're getting featured by other famous people in the niche. And so this, I believe, is the fastest way, six months, to get famous in any B2B niche. So thank you so much for listening to this episode of Confessions of a B2B Marketer. I've got to give a quick shout out to Matt Malloy for giving an awesome rating for the show. Go and check out Matt. Search for Matt Malloy on LinkedIn. He's killing it. It says M-A-T-T-M-I-L-L-O-Y. He's killing it on LinkedIn. Matt, thanks for the review. If you have any feedback for the show, please go to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating or review, and I'll get you a shout out on the show. All of the links I've mentioned for resources from this episode are going to be linked in the show notes below. And finally, obviously, before we finish, we need to give a shout out to the most important SaaS company in the world right now is Hrefs. Hrefs Webmaster Tours are 100% free and you can literally blow up your SEO. I mean, maybe I can't say that, but you can literally use their very powerful tools for free. So the most important thing for me is tracking the keywords that we rank for and also tracking the backlinks that we get. If we can get more backlinks, then we're going to rank for more keywords and it's super important to track. So Google Ahrefs Webmaster Tools, I'll link to that below, sign up for free. You can, if you basically have the Google Search Console account for your domain, then you can do all those things for free. So basically go and do that now because it's awesome. And finally, of course, thank you for listening.